It's Survivor's Friendly Fire Show, episode 201 for Summer Games Fest 2022, or E3, fake E3 2022, or whatever. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm Steve. My name is Steve Wright. That's who I am. With me is uh, Ben Salter, my co-host. Uh, I think you slept today, so you are yeah. you should just carry I'm this good. whole thing, dude. <laughs> How are you? Um, that's the, uh, the first... <laughs> xbox e3 slash not e3 that i haven't watched live since like maybe 2007 or something nearly always gotten up for it and today i thought you know what i'm just gonna watch the replay at like 8 a.m and no regrets it was fine nothing was not that i really care about spoilers but nothing was spoiled you just get up you ignore your phone and you put on youtube and watch it like it's the same thing uh as getting up and watching it live but if you miss the live reactions to people being like oh my god is that the thing but I'm too old for that anyway, so I don't really care. Well, the weird thing was, because, like, the way that I've got the two screens, and I was covering the news, obviously, um, so I could have spoiled it for you, I guess, if you had your phone on. Um, I have all these feeds up and everything and, like, YouTube things to try to grab videos to embed in, and you know how it works. Um, but I had Twitter up, and it seems like mm. like Jeff Keighley in L.A., they were, like, two minutes ahead of everything. So it was kind of useful because he's like, oh, now it's Redfall. It's like, oh, I'll start typing in stuff about Redfall to actually write a news piece around. Um, so that was good. Um, I think they were a little bit ahead of us in the Melbourne Fan Fest at Fortress Melbourne as well. Jay uh, Ball, our friend, went and looked like it was fun. Um, but, yeah, yeah, like, I couldn't imagine getting up and driving into the city to sit and watch that i could barely drag myself out of bed to cover it and then as soon as it was done i basically went back to bed and was happy that i did it but like yeah we'll get to we'll get to xbox in a second um well there's yeah. tons of other stuff to talk about first i guess and we should go back to the start we've got so much that's... to get into sorry ben go ahead no well that's it that's it's a non-e3 week of a bunch of e3 stuff basically so it begins with state of play essentially which is a few days ago now uh, but that's Sony hasn't been officially at E3 for a long time, but they've been doing their own thing around E3, and this is it. They were very quick to set the scene with a uh, lower your expectations. We're not going to have any first party games there. It's our third party partners only, which is probably because they didn't have a great deal of anything to show themselves. Um, so they focused all on third party stuff, and probably fair to say the big announcement was Resident Evil 4 Remake, or as they're calling it, Resident Evil 4. Um, and it looks pretty good. It does. Um, it was one of those things where it was like, it's been rumored for so long and it's been hyped for so long and we don't know a lot about it from what the, the reveal was, but I'm hoping it's the rumors are true and I hope, I'm hope i hoping it's more, less of a strict retelling of RE4, which kind of goes off the rails with like the castle and the, the, the giant statue of the very short man and then like the military complex at the end. I hope they, they lean into the, the supernatural creepy castle stuff that they were going to put in Resident Evil 4 and then took out. It sounds like that's kind of where they're leaning into it, like some sort of fusion, and I hope that's the case. We'll obviously find out more about that later on. Um, another it was like It was basically like the Capcom Direct. There is a Capcom Direct coming, but that's just going to be games that have already been announced because they were announced basically at Sony. Um, the next big one is Street Fighter VI, which uh, has been announced already, but we got like a big roster reveal. Uh, more than yeah. Capcom intended, I think. There were some leaks that had more of the roster than they planned. But, um, like, Guile uh, wasn't even at the Sony when he was announced at Summer Game Fest a couple days later. But same kind of thing. Um, I don't know. It's a fighting game. What do you think about it? Uh, I had actually forgotten it was even announced already, like, when it came up. Because I was only half watching it. Again, I didn't watch this one live either. Uh, and I kind of saw it, and I thought, oh, Street Fighter's back. And then I remembered, oh, no, it's already back. Because there was that whole thing about the logo um so yeah i don't really i'm not that big into street fighter didn't notice that much well there you go um there's there was a huge emphasis on sci-fi horror games but not quite yet um at sony's first party third party state of play get ready for me to make a whole bunch of just completely inaccurate statements today uh we saw the callisto protocol who's uh, which is from striking distance studios glenn Schofield, the guys who made the original dead space uh, at visceral over at ea uh, it looks fantastically awesome. We saw like a whole bunch of gameplay. We saw like an emphasis on melee, um, just really creepy, spooky 
like dead space like morph bad guy things what was your takeaway from the callisto protocol are you excited for it i guess is the first question because i certainly am um potentially but yeah like watching this back all i really took in was resident evil 4 is a thing like the rest of it just didn't grab me at all to be perfectly honest oh stray kind of did but like it, it felt very low on content that was exciting so and what i've realized again watching today is i'm very bad at in my 30s now of taking in these game names like a game gets announced and no doubt we'll talk about a bunch of the ones from xbox and i'll completely forget what they're called uh, i'm just terrible at picking any of them up so i don't remember this one at all the callisto protocol the dead yeah. spacey one. Oh well oh it, yeah it reminded me of the division more than anything i was like is that division <laughs> <laughs> no anyway. um and they and they showed the weird thing is i think i don't think the sony presentation was part of summer games fest but at summer game it fest had it sh- on the logo it said like oh, state of play summer game fest well, they kind of took the wind out of the sails of summer game fest because the callisto protocol was again at that one and it was basically just like a director's cut of what we saw a, a day or two before it's like well okay well that's really dumb we'll get to summer game fest in a second um you said you were excited about stray which is the cat game yeah no? well, so, <laughs> well kind of I think this is the thing with this type of event. It's very, like, minimal. Uh, but I was the mainly excited about it because they announced it as a game which is launching on PlayStation Plus, whatever fancy version you get, which is actually big news, and they kind of glossed over it because until this point, as far as I know, not a fact-based show, we didn't actually have any definitive, like, games will launch on the service day one. We know that PlayStation games won't, but now there's at least some level of precedent for other games and so i'm going to play it like most of these games i'm not going to play because they're not going to be on a sub service uh but this one will be so i think that's promising for having more content come to playstation plus agreed and i think you're right i think this is the first like at launch game to come to playstation extra and deluxe in australia uh and yeah. that happens on the 19th of july so that's Soon. pretty much a week a month after we get the service so value yeah for money and it's what they need to do to have new content drop in. So if they're just going to be too restrictive and wait like two years for their first party games, they need to get some of that third party. And it's mostly going to be indie stuff. That's what props up Game Pass as well, which is fine. I think it makes it a much better proposition to have new stuff, even if it is smaller games kind of launching in it um, fairly regularly. Agreed. Uh, the other thing in news I just wanted to kind of pull out because it, it's it's happening more often, which is good. Um, if you're a PC fan and you wish you had more Sony games to play on your computer rather than your PlayStation, uh, both Spider-Man and Miles Morales are coming to PC. Uh, Spider-Man Remastered comes first in August and Miles Morales follows sometime later this year. So I don't know if you have anything to say about that. It's just kind of like tick That's good. neat. If you haven't played it because you don't have a PlayStation, now it's much more accessible, so that's good. Um, and there was that tweet from Insomniac three years ago, whenever the first game originally came out, saying Spider-Man will never come to PC. And I'm glad they haven't deleted it because it got retweeted a bunch. And fair enough, like it's, it just goes to show, never say never. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. Obviously, at the time, Sony had probably told them to say that, like this is PlayStation only, buy a PlayStation. Um, but they've... <clears throat> If anything, it goes to show how much they've changed their tune on this type of stuff. Like three years yeah. ago, Sony, last gen Sony was very, we will never be off PlayStation. You need our platform to play our games. And now they're very, you know what? We can make a bunch of money on PC. It's not really um, hurting our own sales because it's the people who are going to buy on PC are mostly people who otherwise would have not bought this game. They've accepted that and promising for future PlayStation titles. I think they're all coming to PC just after that year or two on PlayStation. Yeah, great segue. We're going to go straight into Summer Game Fest. We'll talk about how much of a yawn fest it was, in my opinion, but because you had such a good segue into PlayStation PC, um, the the tent pole, the kind of like one last thing that they had, uh, was yeah. an, unfortunately a game that leaked uh, ahead of the announcement. Uh, the Last of Us Part 1 uh, is, is the name of the game. It's the third version of The Last of Us, um, which mm. in 10 years uh, means the game has been done three times on three different platform generations. What do you think about that first? <laughs> I think there is probably at least 50 other games PlayStation should have remastered first before remastering a game they've already remastered. Um, they're selling it as a remake, but it's it's using the base game as far as I'm aware. So it's, it's just another attempt at a remaster, just a bit more remastered because the PS4 one was more of an up res PS3 game this one there looks like they're doing a lot to some of the assets but it's still the same game it's like that gears ultimate 
that was the original game looked way prettier, um, but it's it's not really a full remake. So I think it's in that category. Yeah, and it's I like think... a close one because it seems like it's being rebuilt and it's using like The Last of Us Part Two engine and tech and accessibility and stuff. So it's like it's a, it's a hybrid. It's not quite a new game. It's not yeah. quite. A, yeah. Anyway, sorry to cut you it off. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like a Final Fantasy VII level remake. Like if that's what we're talking when we use the term remake, I don't think it's that level. But I think it's a lot more than the last game, which was called The Last of Us Remastered. So they can't call it that again. They've, it's a bit of a COD Four situation now. There's so many games called Modern Warfare. Like what do we call this one? Uh, and yeah, it's just it's too soon for me. I think you can play the original game. It's actually one of the the big selling points of PlayStation Plus Deluxe or Extra, and that you can play The Last of Us Remastered. So like it's it's not like it's in a bad a bad way. Um, it's not super new, but I don't think it needs it just yet. But yeah, I, I suppose it's it's one of their biggest franchises, and it's officially not on PS5. So that's probably why they're doing this. Right, and when it comes out on PS5, uh, that'll happen in September. Um, it will then eventually follow on Windows PC. Not that a date has been given, but again, it's that strategy of, yes, we're going to put it on PC for the PC-minded, but also we're going to put it on PlayStation first. Please buy it there, uh, unless yeah. you really don't want to, and then you just have to wait. Um, so good for that. Uh, there's a lot of sci-fi horror games, and like you were just saying it before, like it's hard to put a name to a game sometimes. Like There were so many extremely like themed games at summer game fest i couldn't tell you which was which there was like an alien one yeah. that it's this weird thing of like even with marvel midnight suns where they had the trailer and it's like here's this cool course co like close quarters marvel people fighting and then it's like oh by the way it's a card based you know like top down XCOM. we didn't show any of that a lot of the game trailers had that sort of thing like the aliens game something dawn reveal no nope, whatever it's called is like a top down like third party isometric yeah. but like they were showing like cinematic things that weren't connected and then there are all these sci-fi ones that i can't i honestly couldn't tell you the names of that just followed in that theme and you know callisto protocol was in there as well takeaways from you like was anything interesting from summer games so I, I watched like the 10 minute recap of like cutting out the filler here of the games and that if anything it jammed them together even more and it looked all like one game for a while but it was a bunch of trailers for different stuff and yeah, it was, it was, I'm going to say the same thing about Xbox later. It's too samey, too much of the same type of thing constantly on a reel that I kind of, I, I don't know what I'm interested in. I don't know what to take away. There was just a lot of the same. And then they bookended it with another mission from Modern Warfare 2, which is like the same again, but the big one that everyone's going to buy instead. So like, I would have hated to be one of those developers. Anyone else who had a shooter in there just got crushed by it. And here's the big one. So yeah. it's, yeah, it was strange. It wasn't a very good show and that's not jeff Keeley's. well it's jeff Keeley's fault in some he ways because, a lot yeah he said he's he did the don't ma like manager expectations thing like sony too, did but kind yeah. of like way too late after a hype trailer after selling tickets to this thing on imax so that's his fault i don't think it's his fault that you know like he doesn't get to make the games you know decide what games are being made but he did have control over how they were displayed and maybe like breaking them up better would have worked better yeah he needed to do it because E3 just like checked out this year. So like more power to him for trying this thing. Uh, and I guess that's what kind of leads me to the last story I want to talk about from Summer Game Fest is that Jeff Keighley said that uh, it's back on next year and it's going to be back on as an in-person event. So he's really he's really going for E3's space, even though the ESA yeah. said, oh, no, E3 2023 is, is coming back. Uh, who, who do you think will win? Do, do we lose as consumers and media Ooh. people with everything getting divided into these weird two camps now or splintering even more? Like, what do you think is going to happen? There's not space for both to exist <laughs> beyond more than one year. So maybe they both try next year and then one of them will definitively die after that because they're going for the same thing. If they tried to, be, if this tried to be separate and this was online only and E3 lent more back into having an actual convention, then they could probably exist side by side. Um, or even if they did like E3 presents Summer Game Fest, like it could be, but they obviously don't want to do that. They're competing. Um, E3 should have the kind of step up in that it's done it for 25 years and it, it should know what to do and it should, it's had a year off. Like they've had time to retool. They can change things now. Um, it was like E3 was in a bad way, probably 2017 through 19, like it's last three. It was just dying slowly. Um, very few people there. A lot of publishers pulled out. So it's, it's basically whoever signs the most publishers. If one of them gets Sony to come back, they left E3 a while ago. Um, like Activision wasn't there the last time either. 
uh, like EA did their own thing years ago. Like if they can bring some of these back in, they will win. Um, they, they, like E3 didn't have enough content in 2019 on its own. So I'm not sure if those publishers don't come back. I don't think there's enough for either of them to exist. It, it's all such a mess because I think Summer Game Fest didn't really work this year because there was like the Summer Game Fest bit. And then there was the, oh, Sony wants to do its own bit. And then Microsoft wants yeah. to do its own bit. And if Ubisoft and EA pull their, you know, stuff together, there might be an Ubisoft one and an EA one. And, like, that has to stop. It has to kind of be a unified show again. Like, it just has to be the Summer Game Fest st- stream. But that would take eight hours. Like, I don't know how you fix some of these things. And I don't know if E3 did it perfectly either. But, like, there has to be some sort of thought towards that. Um, uh, yeah, it's... I am looking forward to seeing what happens, but I'm also kind of terrified because I felt, even though it wasn't a big year, I felt stretched thin as it was, and we didn't even get to like play games. If that comes back into the mix, like I just, I'm just going to be a broken person. Feel bad for me. Yeah. Well, I don't feel that bad. I've done it plenty of times. It's not that you know. It's a it's a busy week, and at least you did it from the comfort of your own home. You didn't have to fly to LA to go watch this thing. Um, that's an advantage. But E3 was always about. The convention, which we've said it many times on this show, it's, it was the convention which you don't really see sitting at home. And the the live streams were technically separate to E3. They happened beforehand, and each publisher held their own. So Summer Game Fest is trying to combine them into one. And they're like, Xbox is not going to have that. Sony's not going to have that. Um, <clears throat> and nor should they. Like The platform holders should have their own events. They've got enough content. But it's getting those smaller ones to kind of pull together. Does EA and Ubisoft and Activision and whoever need their own show probably not based on previous years like we before they got acquired we thought saw bethesda you know really pad out stuff because they didn't have enough for an hour-long show they had a, a tight 10 minutes which they then had to fill with 50 minutes of filler and then like here's blink 182 like it was fun but it's they didn't really need their own show neither does like square enix and stuff like that they they never had enough stuff really so if it could get together and actually get them to work together and have their own show, maybe it would work, but I just don't see it happening. They don't connect well enough. Yeah, the, the thing I don't like about Summer Game Fest, they toned it down quite a bit this year, is that they, there was still like an ad for a credit card company like in the middle of it, and The Rock yeah. coming on and just like being an incoherent mess for like five minutes straight talking about his weird energy drink line. It's like, this. cut that out. I don't, I don't need any of that. Like, do a pre-show or a post show where you like have your weird sponsors and like get your money in. Um, uh, and summer game fest just had so many things. Day of the devs was actually a really good um, presentation, just full of really cool indie stuff. There's a preview we have on the site just with like all the games that came in that thing. So like, rather than trying to talk about them all, go check that out. Um, Devolver did its own thing, which like, I like the Devolver presentations in that they're funny and quirky and there's a cool like narrative going around their presentations. But they literally like announced three games in a half an hour. Yeah. With one, Cult of the Lamb was already announced and it was a release date. Like I, we, I don't need a thirty-minute presentation for f- four trailers, please. Like, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, too long. Uh, Skate Story and the Plucky Squire, though, really, really cool. Go on the website. We'll link so you can check those out. They looked really neat. Um, Skate Story is like you're a demon skating in the underworld and you're made of glass and pain. And if you fall, obviously you shatter because you're made of glass. That seems cool to me. Um, on to the last big presentation of Summer Game Fest being the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. Yeah. <laughs> they did some news yeah. ahead of time. Ben, take it away, please. I'm, lo- I'm losing speak speech. Uh, well, let's go through the stuff they did early. So they, they had enough content that they wanted to get some stuff kind of announced and out of the show because they wanted to go all games. So they did their non-game stuff first. They announced Cloud coming to more countries. Uh, But the big one is we finally get Xbox Design Lab in Australia and a bunch of other countries abroad. So you and I have both created a controller. I'm definitely going to get at least one more. You can check them out in all their glory on the site or you're holding up yours right now. I have one as well. Uh, We, you went very colorful. You've gone with the Pride Design, which was also announced uh, as part of the Design Lab kind of relaunch. I think they closed down for about a week or so and everyone thought, what's happening to Design Lab? Uh, Well, it's gone global is what's happening. So for a controller like this, the price, the base price for the controller is about the same as a normal one. It's about a hundred bucks, um, and you can add on engraving. So like you have to go real tight to see. Like I got my gamer tag on the bottom, but you won't even be able to read that because it's so light. Um, it's easier to see go. online. Yours, there we go. 
yours is brighter, so it's a bit easier to see it. Um, but you get to pick everything. So you get to pick the joysticks, the buttons, everything you want, basically. You can have the rubber backs. It's very easy to do. Um, and they arrive in about three to four weeks. So I'm surprised at how quick it is, how easy it is. If you get all the bells and whistles, I think it's about 150, which is maybe a bit much, but that's if you're getting the metallic design and the, the rubber grips and everything on there, um, which are nice enough, but I've had those fall off a little bit on the Elite controllers, so I thought not for me. Um, and yeah, my design, I have explained it in the in the Survivor written report, but um, pretty much I've gone for my Gamertag color. So whenever Xbox launches, I get this tealy color because it's what I picked like nine years ago. And that has become the Xbox color to me, even though it's very non-Xbox, like it's quite different to the Xbox green, which now looks wrong. Um, so I thought I'm going to get that in Xbox design matched with some black and white kind of inverted buttons. So that's my thinking. Very good. Yeah, I have no idea which options I selected anymore. It's the pride top, obviously, um, which is admittedly super busy, but it's like super busy on purpose. Um, I You got to do it yourself. I had to like yeah. watch as someone screen mirrored themselves like ordering it for me so the only thing that i'm not crazy about is that they went oh it actually worked if you're watching on the video format they went all caps for my gamer tag name and it's just it's very shouty um you can control caps and not caps so i would recommend making sure you've got yeah. what you want um super awesome super easy to use it took two seconds to get here three weeks four weeks um it's pretty and- quick yeah, like tons of options. It's like it's impossible to try to explain everything to you. You can just go and fiddle with yourself. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll gloss over that. You could uh, <laughs> you could spend you. hours kind of just making up designs, but I'm definitely going to go back in there and I'm going to make the Xbox 360 original design. Which uh, not until I did this that I realized the big change. I mean, like it's it's quite a retro looking controller, but the change from 360 to one is they changed the buttons. They were like fully colored on 360, and then they just colored the letter on uh, xbox one and now not even that's colored really most of the controller is just black and white buttons so having that retro uh fully colored button is what makes it look like a 360 controller in that i don't think they quite have the right gray like they have like a pure icy white which is the modern color but the xbox white or the xbox 360 white was like that little bit off so i need to get as close as possible to that there's one that well i've got one here actually here's Oh, oh, sort of. Here's perfect. the bottom. That's the gray color that... Oh, it's not going to show up on my screen very well. Anyway, that's that's a 360 controller. Um, mm. There's one gray that's too light and one gray that's too dark, I think, in the current design lab okay. setup, in my in my opinion. I haven't gone to an exact science or anything like that. But it's really exciting and it's really neat. So that's something that wasn't even part of the show today. Um, they will get into the Bethesda stuff at the end. Um, the first game that wasn't Bethesda, that wasn't even Xbox, I guess, that was announced is High on Life, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, it's by the guy who does Rick and Morty and whoever voices Rick was the voice um, in the trailer, which is like you're in space and aliens are using humans as like drugs and you have guns that talk to you and, and a knife that talks to you and you just, it's insane. It looks like Rick and Morty. It sounds like Rick and Morty and it, plays like rick and morty would if it was a video game i guess what do you think about yeah. it uh, i think one of the highlights in that it was yet another shooter but one that took a very different approach and it's gone for comedy uh so overall this showcase i think had it went for quantity over quality it just went for here's a bunch of stuff we've got coming to game pass in the next 12 months and kudos for going for 12 months only that obviously restricted them quite a bit um and they only wanted to show stuff which is hopefully coming out but as you know everything is open to being delayed um, but I think they went too samey. Like there were heaps of stuff in the middle, which I couldn't tell you the names of because they were all like survival or horror or like FPS in that mix. Very dark and gloomy, barely any colorful games uh, and all that kind of B grade shooter. We're not a triple A game and we're not going for it, that type of feel. Um, so this one that was a little bit different, it was more colorful. It had some character. It was a nice change from all the other stuff that looks so samey. Yeah. And I guess the only thing that, like, that is a good point. They were They were saying... Um, just before the presentation started, you know, like, we've heard you, you want lots of gameplay, you don't want hype trailers, you don't want just, like, a Fable logo, and that's it. So here's gameplay. It's only things in the next 12 months, except for the one thing that they didn't do that fit that was, here's Hideo Kojima talking about a game that he's going to make for us. No, you don't get to know what it's called. No, you don't know when it's coming out. That's it. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah. Which well, that's, I think how every- they, that's how they got around breaking their own rules, right? Because they said... 
we're only going to show stuff for the next 12 months. But they didn't show this game. They didn't even say what the game name is. They just announced a partnership, even though it did get leaked. I think it's called Overdose and it looks pretty likely. I but think that's didn't... what it's going to be. But also, like, just, yeah. why not just go in? Like, just, and sorry, this is the one that's not going to be out in 2023, but we were so excited. Stay tuned. Like, it's, it's like when they had a, uh, Neil Druckmann at the game Summer Game Fest being like, we're making a Last of Us multiplayer game. Here's a, a piece of concept art. That's it. It's like, then just either don't talk about it or show more. Anyway, um, yay for Kojima. Uh, Eastern games coming to Xbox. Persona 3, 4, and 5 are coming. Uh, there is a new game called Wolong Fallen Dynasty by Team Ninja that's coming day uh, one to Game Pass. I think that's in 2023. Yeah, well, all of it is. So, uh, there was everything's coming in the next 12 months, which brings us to June 23. I think they probably were sitting on some stuff, which is coming out after that, but still coming out next year. Um, but almost none of it is coming out this year. So, like, it's the next 12 months, but it's all coming out January to June next, or yeah, January to June next year. Uh, that's going to be a busy time if all this actually lands in there because they only announced like what maybe three or four games actually coming out in the next six months. It's all the back end. Yeah, the ones coming out in the next six months in, in 2022 are kind of... Mm, so there's um, As Dusk Falls, which was... I think they announced it last year. It's like a narrative yeah. story by um, a former Quantic Dream person. Looks kind of cool if you're into that. Um, Grounded comes out of... Uh, Doesn't count. Game it came out years ago. Exactly. Uh, Plague Tale Requiem, the sequel to Plague Tale. Look, actually looks really Go good. On. That's coming out. Um, Scorn, which has been in Xbox presentations for years now uh pentiment is a new obsidian game it was the weird one that's kind of like medievally looking it looks like i think it's card based i'm not even sure kind of glossed over it um yeah. and like callisto protocol are like the big ones to me and then there's like flight sim special edition seven another season of halo infinite more sea of thieves hot wheels again and forza horizon so like it's there's a lot going on, but it's like, eh, it's not as... It's, it's the B tier, and most of that stuff is not um, Xbox first party. For something called the Xbox show, Bethesda did a lot of the heavy lifting. Even though Obsidian is not a Bethesda studio, I still think they are in my mind. No, they are now. Uh, are Obsidian? they? Yeah. Oh, I thought um, no, they Xbox are. owned them independently. Anyway, doesn't matter. No, no. Uh, well, yeah, there was a lot a lot going on, but a lot none of it was really surprising or unexpected. It was... Having a few Japanese games is the thing. That's why they use Phil for that. Like They're kind of saying, we're doing this stuff which we haven't done before, and we've got Team Ninja making a game for us. That's probably bigger than it got recognition for. Uh, but yeah, the, the rest of it was just kind of, there's not that much happening this year. Yeah, and then I guess 2023, there is uh, a lot of yeah Microsoft stuff. And I guess like I'm, I'm, I shouldn't because it's not, it's not approved and not finalized yet. But like I am counting Diablo 4, Activision, Blizzard, like that, that'll be them. Probably by yeah. then. Uh, Redfall, Starfield, the new Forza Motorsports, uh, Minecraft Legends, which looks exactly like that last one. Dungeons to me, but hey, new Minecraft game, great. Uh, Stalker 2, hopefully, um, comes out. That's it. And then there's a whole bunch of, you know, the stuff we were talking about, the Personas, Cocoon, yeah. which is a new one by the guy who did Limbo, uh, Dead Space. The last case of Benedict Fox looked really cool. I couldn't explain it to you right now, but it looked really neat. Now, that actually looked really good, and it was a, a different again. It reminded me of the Ori games. It was some level of side-scrolling, uh, and it looked a little bit different. But again, same tone. Like, all these games are that dark, murky, there's some type of zombie, vampire-type creature. Like, it's all... That seemed to be, like, 90% of these games. They were just a bit too samey um, across the board. Yeah. It's that... Yeah, it's something's in the zeitgeist with horror, yeah. sci-fi, spooky. But that's all right. Good for that. Um, in the Activision camp uh overwatch 2 comes out in october it's going to be free to play um which i guess isn't that surprising because it's kind of getting slammed yeah. so if you're not paying for it you're maybe inclined to try it yeah well, it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't do free to play like everything is like think about the competitors to this are all free to play so they don't really have a choice yeah uh diablo 4 uh introduced new class in the necromancer it's gonna have cross play and cross progression which is neat um yes. And finally, you checked out um, Modern Call of Duty Warfare. Nope, something That's like that. That's it. Help me. Close enough. <laughs> uh, go ahead and read that preview. It's quite long. We saw quite a lot of it. So we saw some campaign and some multiplayer, which is rare. They normally do them separately. Um, they didn't really 
well, we saw a lot of the campaign gameplay. They haven't actually shown multiplayer gameplay, but I can tell you what that's going to look like. The same as the last one. Um, but yeah, it looks, it's good. It's it's pretty promising. It's uh, Infinity Ward's first current gen COD, so the kind of last off the list to get a crack at that um, proper current gen, not just back from Pat. Um, but yeah, it looked good. We did see, as I mentioned before, one level, especially in State of Play, or not State of Play, Summer Game Fest. Um, didn't see anything today because it is still tied to Sony for marketing purposes. So we probably won't see COD at an Xbox event for like three or four years because it will still be tied to uh, to PlayStation. That's why we saw like everything else, Activision Blizzard, but not COD today. It looks, you know, it looks good, but also just when they start doing those deep dives into Call of Duty, it's exactly the same looking every year, and I kind of glaze over a teeny bit, and then they're like, "Ooh, water!" And I'm like, "Okay, I'll take your word for it." When I play, a lot it, about I'll the water. Like it. <laughs> Whoever wrote that Pokemon review a few years ago, who too much water, they will hate this game. All about water. <laughs> um, and okay, like I'm not counting the Elder Scrolls. Uh, online is when i went for a pee break and then when they did the cfd things then, i went down and also, got more coffee like that was they the- also did fallout 76 so like uh to their credit we talked about it a few weeks ago that they they need to just go game 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 don't have too many spokespeople and they didn't they only had i think sarah bond uh pete hines and phil spencer and maybe a couple of people from turn 10 to talk about forza and todd um and todd of course um i think they could have cut pete hines i feel like he didn't really have anything to say uh, he kind of said, so Todd's going to come later and talk about the thing that you want to hear about. I'm going to talk about, for some reason, Elder Scrolls and Fallout 76, which are only on life support because we don't have newer games anywhere coming anytime soon for these franchises. Um, cut him. That would be my advice to them. And Sarah Bond is good. I like her presenting style, but I think it was so weird that they had her go. She basically just said, um, all these games you're going to see today pretty much come to Game Pass and you can play them wherever you want, console, PC, mobile or cloud. And now we're going to hear from Riot Games, who are about to announce that you can play this game on PC or mobile only, no console. <laughs> like, it was just such a weird order of those things. They should have had her, and they should have put that later, and no one would have realized that. But it was it was so clunky to be like, you can play anywhere you want. Now, here's an announcement where you can't play where you want. Like, it's, it was just weird. Yeah, Other agreed. people probably didn't notice that, but they just like, it really stuck out to me. <laughs> no, no, I, I thought that too. Um, and you've, t- you've covered the Riot news. So, like, I guess my, my point that I was getting to very sloppily is that Bethesda kind of did the heavy lifting at the start and the end, mm. and then like really nothing else in the middle. Like I don't count ESO and, and Fallout as games that I care about. So they kicked off with uh, Redfall gameplay. So these were, are both games that were supposed to be out this year. They're coming out within the next 12 months, theoretically, um, but they'll be definitely in the 2023 camp. Um, yeah. We saw a little bit of like solo and some co-op play and kind of got an idea of how like the the vampire stuff is going to work and saw cultists who will have to help you know fight with i the idea of it is not that exciting to me like especially if it's like a grab your friends and play like because i don't do that it's it's hard for me to you know find time to just play and enjoy something let alone getting friends no offense to you we, if we could try let's try um we'll play one time well maybe maybe twice <laughs> Like, the gameplay looks good. Like, it looks very arcade, arcane and, and fluid and good, but I'm just like, I'm not as excited for it as I... Not like excited at all. Uh, I really like... Dishonored is one of my favorite newer franchises of the last couple of generations, and I think they're great at that style of game. Um, and I, I wish they would stick to that. Like, Xbox is, as a whole, with Bethesda and soon Activision, uh, they're missing some quality single-player games. That's still where Sony's got them. Um, and they've got a studio who's made some great single-player games. One of them is still not on Xbox and will come out in the next few months. Um, and now they're going for like a, here's our co-op shooter, which is really not what we need more of on Xbox. Like it's, it just doesn't fit for me. Correct. Um, and then the other one finishing up, uh, we had like probably 15 minutes or so of, of Starfield, which is, mm. it looks really pretty, but it's very much like Fallout with a space skin. Yeah. But I'm down for that. I don't know. What, like, what did you think about it? I uh, saw a few memes of uh, No Man's Skyrim, which is, I think is a pretty fair um, <laughs> summary of it. It looks, it's borrowing a lot from No Man's Sky. Uh, and it's also Skyrim in space. Uh, it looked pretty rough. So I can see why it, no chance of being launched this year. I think when we're talking next 12 months, this is a June next year game. Like I, I think they're going to push it. Wouldn't surprise me if it pushes back again. Whereas I think Redfall will probably be more like that Feb, March type, type of time frame. Um, just like the combat didn't quite look very polished, the frame rate was struggling, and this is like a curated demo, like what's the rest of the game look like. Yeah. But beyond that, and the concept's really good, I think it is, they pretty much said Skyrim in space, and that's more or less what we're getting. Um, I think it will be 
more involved than No Man's Sky, but in terms of how they're creating the worlds, I was a bit disappointed when he said we've got a thousand planets because it means they're going to be that randomly generated star, which is, they always feel dead and lifeless. Yeah. So I hope that the like the main story planets and worlds um, are like properly created. And if you go there, you get a, like a handcrafted level and a actual characters to, to visit. And maybe the other, you know, 950 planets are randomly generated and they just have loot and resources and stuff. And you don't really have to go there. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm a bit worried about how that will work. But on the whole, I think it looked good. Yeah, I'm like, I'm excited for it. But that kind of thing did did scare me a little bit. Like you can land on any point of these thousands of planets. And it's like, well, but like, what's the actual incentive to do that? And I'm kind of worried yeah. it's too ambitious and it's biting off more than it can chew, especially, you know, for the release date now that they've shifted and, and definitely have to probably hit because if they do it again, they're in trouble. Um, a lot of stuff to do, like building your own ships, building your own settlements, but like it's it's not anything that we haven't seen before and it's basically like No yeah. Man's Sky on steroids and we all know how that kind of started out and it's admittedly No Man's Sky is a lot better now, but like promising the world, you better, <laughs> the galaxy maybe, or the universe you have That's to it. deliver and i'm not i'm not fully confident that they're going to do that yet and historically bethesda games launch pretty underdone um i don't think and that's what, kind of what it looks like at the moment they've got another year or so um i don't think it can launch like that it needs to launch totally ready to go and in a great way um having already been delayed so that's my concern but it did look good overall i'm excited to play it um, Xbox did say, I think they even opened saying the most anticipated open world RPG in the last 20 years. Like, to, we, you know, we talked about don't overhype things. They've overhyped it on purpose. It has to deliver now. Yeah. They didn't have to say that. Well, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, well, and moving into our next segment, because I think that's all. Did anything you wanted to talk about from Microsoft and Bethesda that we haven't? I think that's probably it that's pretty well i mean so the the one that wasn't what i thought they announced forza motorsport as a next year game i was pretty convinced that was going to come out this year and it would slot into september or something um obviously just yet another one that's pushed back a little bit and they're trying to cover it up with some forza horizon dlc that i don't really care about yeah. um look good but i think 23 is too late for that in a new console like gt7 will be out for ages by then and look, it looks just as good um i'm not that into motorsport though i have yeah, to say yeah ben, but they showed man they showed real vehicle damage. So take that Gran wow. Turismo. Like I just, I would rather, I'm not really excited for Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels Horizon. You know what I'm trying Whatever to say. Whatever it is. I'm more excited for that than for motorsport because motorsport is yeah. like the, it's, but it's not us. It's like the, the traditional like hardcore simulator that I'm just like, it looks pretty, yeah. but I don't really care. Um, Moving on, then things that we're missing from whatever show you want to talk about at Summer Games Fest. Um, since we're you know starting with or you know still on Xbox, I think the notable one for you, um, yes, we thought was all locked in. Didn't didn't happen. What the <laughs> what? I thought it was. Locked. I actually thought after Sky because Phil came on briefly to kind of set up Todd Howard for Skyfield, and he kind of said it was we fitting to start with Bethesda and we end with Bethesda. I thought he was going to come back again because they kind of had a few minutes to go and like the Starfield stuff had done, but they just had their sizzle reel. Um, I thought he was going to pop back in and say, so we've talked about the game for the next 12 months. We actually have one that's out today. Just one more thing. And it was going to be the Goldeneye remaster because the achievements were leaked like six months ago on True Achievements and then they went live on the Xbox site. So I don't think you can get any more conclusive than that. This game exists and it's ready to go. Um, so it, it, the obvious contender for a shadow drop. Um, Maybe it's getting its own thing, like Xbox is back in a few days with an extended showcase, but I don't think they'd waste it there. Um, maybe, like, Nintendo will do something. They announce their Direct like a day out these days, so maybe it'll be there because the rumor would be they're going to share it, or, like, it is Bond's 60th anniversary this year, so maybe it'll get announced somewhere later in the year to do with the celebration for that, but it's just strange that it wasn't there. Um, and then, yeah, so Xbox actually had quite a lot. Because they, were, they pigeonholed themselves into the next 12 months, we now know what's coming out well beyond that which is stuff that has been at the previous few showcases. So I think overall they were better the last few years than this year's because they went a bit wider in scope. So um, what do we have? Like Fable wasn't there, Everwild wasn't there, Avowed wasn't there. Um, just Perfect Dark is a pretty big one that's been, like was announced so long ago and we just haven't seen anything for it. Uh, and it's just, there's yeah, there's that kind of list of the big name Xbox games that we're expecting to come and they didn't really have any of them. Like all the big Xbox AAA games had already been announced. Um, and we knew they were coming pretty soon, so there was there was just lacking that surprise. I thought they might have one, 
they might have a perfect dark or something, which they were kind of saying coming sooner than you thought. Yeah, well, and some of those games, not some, maybe one of those games could come out holiday 2023. I, mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if at least one of them does, but like, it's, I kind of like that we're not knowing about it and we're not getting hyped up that long. Um, I am surprised though that they didn't show us anything of like infinite, like an update on campaign co-op or Forge yeah, that's weird. Or you know, like the next story-based thing that's supposed to come out because this is supposed to be this like evolving, ever-present Halo experience that is basically just stagnating now, um, sadly. But you know that is what it is. In the same kind of vein, if we're if we're talking about other shows, I'm surprised that we didn't get. I know it wasn't you know meant to be first party, but I'm just surprised we haven't seen anything about God of War Ragnarok and you know we're still kind of being told oh it's probably coming out in 2022 there's a rumor that you know it's pegged for a November release in 2022 we haven't seen yeah. a lick of gameplay from Ragnarok in at least a, a year so yeah I don't I don't think it's coming out this year but I don't know I'd like to be surprised I'd like to be wrong Who knows? I mean Sony set their expectation but we can still kind of question why didn't they show any first party games they always have at this time of year we probably know why everything's delayed, but it's it's strange for them not to have anything to show. Um, as much as I'm really looking forward to God of War, like at some point they need to announce something new. I feel like they announced that ages ago. Uh, and Sony Lava Good announcing a game like five years out. So um, I thought they would show, not well, when they said they wouldn't, I didn't, but before then I kind of assumed they would be showing some stuff to come out next year at this year's Not E3 showcase. So uh, as much as I think they did a good job kind of setting us up for what they were actually going to do beforehand, Still disappointing that they didn't show any first party stuff because that's ultimately why I have a PlayStation. Which is why most people do. Um, and then to kind of come out with the newest game in a while is just The Last of Us remade again, remastered again. Not very exciting. Well, and they did show some first party stuff, but it was all PlayStation VR 2. But then again, like they didn't give us a release date for PlayStation VR 2. So I'm assuming that's kind of tied to like chip shortages and it's just like really hard to pull hardware together. Um, but even an update saying that, like, yeah, we're trying, guys. We know you want your hands on this. Like, we're showing you games. Like, here's the Horizon um, version. Resident Evil Village is going to get VR2 support. But, like, hold tight because we can't make enough of these for you guys to want to buy them. Um, didn't get any of that. So it's it's that weird flux. We've talked about it before. Like, it's just it's hard to kind of lock in times and dates on things. I understand that. But it's also just kind of sad at the same time. Yeah, it, it makes these events less exciting than they have been in the past. And I think that's why they would struggle to do this in this current landscape as a live event. Because w imagine these shows happened and you went now to a convention to go see these games. What would you actually get hands on with? Like not that much exciting stuff. Um, Street and they're all Fighter pretty 6, I think. Yeah, well, so there's <laughs> some, you know, they, like there is some, but a lot of them are very similar. And there's not that real amazing thing that I need to go see and play. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's hard. And Xbox being quite sneaky in there, they try to be simple and easy to understand when they say this game's coming to console. But does that mean cross gen? Is it current gen only? Like they've avoided the issue by not saying it. Like I don't really like that. I prefer them to come out and be like, this is a proper current gen game. Yeah, it was a bit of a an exercise this morning writing up the news because some of them, if you were like, and it, it, maybe they all did, but I was looking back and forth trying to write stuff. Like some of them had the one and the series logos on them and some just said xbox console, console. and pc yeah. and then if you went to xbox wire like they pretty much laid out what was there's not a lot on xbox one that was announced well, that's to be honest that's what I hear. yeah but like yeah like let's just I, I understand that it's hard for people to get a new console so i don't want to leave them behind but i also just want to leave them behind eventually I want to so leave we can behind. just get new fancy looking games um but I've been playing the quarry. Good segue. We'll talk about what we have up on the site that wasn't Summer Game Fest. I've been playing the quarry and because I had code for Xbox One and Series. And, you know, when you unlock achievements, you get like, you know, ooh, this is rare because hardly anyone's done it. Like, so many people are apparently playing the Xbox One version as compared to the Series right. versions. So it's like, oh, I guess that makes sense because people just maybe can't afford, one, a Series S or a Series X. Or it's that they can't buy a Series X and they don't want to get a Series S, so they're stuck with Xbox One until that happens. So mm. I just hope it that kind sense. of sorts itself out soon and we just get new current gen proper games. Anyway, yeah. I'm babbling. It's been a long time and we need to move on eventually, but not this year. Pot no. Potentially next year. Yeah. 
um, stuff on the site that isn't Summer Game Fest, but is time for Summer Game Fest. You wrote a review of Mario Strikers. I don't know if you want to say anything. It's definitely on the site. Up to it's you. It's Mario Strikers yet again, and a bit lacking in single-player content. Exactly the same as all of the Mario Sport games on Switch, but the multiplayer is fun. That's basically the gist of it. Um, yeah, probably only pipe. pick this one up if you're a keen multiplayer Mario Striker. So, no. Uh, I have reviewed The Quarry, which I've called Supermassive's best game. Um, Ooh. Better than Until Dawn. I love Until Dawn. It's really, really good. Um, leans into, like, the 80s slasher stuff. Just, like, perfectly characters are amazing. Super engaging. Uh, and speaking of characters, I had the chance to interview Evan Evagora, who is in The Quarry. He's a Melbourneian actor, and he was also Elnor in Star Trek Picard. So I got to ask, like, a Star Trek question of him, which was amazing, and I, like did my best not to fanboy out the entire time, and I probably failed. Um, like, good 10-minute interview, really quick and punchy. Uh, I'd recommend, obviously, that you go listen or watch or read um, and check out The Quarry. The interview is spoiler-free, apart from some Picard stuff, if you're worried. Mm. I think that's it. Anything that's else it. about Summer Game Fest that you want to say before we let people on with their days, Ben? No, Well, you know, it was, it was a, a time to kind of embrace that nothing is happening that's pretty much what i got from this it's like here's all the stuff you already knew about and it's kind of progressed a little bit but there it was fine like it's every week we talk about every fortnight we talk about this week in delays and at some point these games have to come out and it kind of feels like we're at the point where things keep getting pushed back and we kind of see them and it's in a way it's great that we finally get some red and some starfield gameplay and that type of thing but I'm, I miss the the classic E3 of like being shocked that something got announced. And I feel like we didn't get that last year, really. Maybe a little bit. Um, and we certainly didn't get that this year. Sony's biggest game is a remake that they've already remade. Um, Xbox is something that Bethesda owns, which didn't make its release date. Nintendo haven't even done an event yet. Will they do one? Potentially, probably not. And the thing I was most looking forward to was a remaster, which actually got remastered 15 years ago and got leaked on the internet from a 64 game from 25 years ago, and it didn't even get announced. So it's a bit of a flat year. <laughs> That's where I'm pretty much ending up. Pretty of a flat, flat year. Yeah. RE4 is, like, one of my favorite games, oh, yeah. and I'm, like, excited about the idea of it. But, like, if this was a Resident Evil 2 announcement, you know, like, kind of out of the blue and excited, like, you know, that is different than this RE4 one that's been rumored for months and months and months and months and months. It's like, oh, yay, finally. So... Yeah, like, it wasn't a bad week. It was just kind of sort of anticlimactic at the same time. It was sort yeah. of exciting. It's pretty safe. It was things which I think they're very confident actually are coming out, which is why there were probably less AAA games in previous years. It was more that smaller level game, which got a lot more exposure than it would have in previous uh, E3s, which is good for some of them, but they just, they're all doing the same thing at the moment, as it turns out, so... It was just none of them really stood out as much as I kind of hoped. Um, but it is what it is, and it's, it's a safe time. There is stuff coming out. I think we can definitely say now congratulations to Elden Ring on Game of the Year because you have no competitors at all. The unless, quarry. Uh, but it beats maybe. it. Maybe. But it beats well, it. Well, God of War, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But I don't think that's coming out. Correct. Um, well, I will just complain about this, but then play my Dead Space and Callisto Protocol and insert 10 other games of exactly the same kind of genre so at least i like sci-fi and horror and i probably it's will enjoy them if, if they're released at a slightly slower uh cadence i don't know i'm babbling uh how do we find you on the internet ben uh i am ben underscore salter on twitter and yourself s right a u and i plan to not be on the internet for like a couple days after this this was full of coffee and is empty and i could use probably like three more of these i think yeah, and then I won't idea. sleep tonight, which is going to be even better. Great. Can't win. Go get some, go get some rest. Okay. Uh, thanks That's for joining right. us. We'll see you in a fortnight. That's right. See ya.